will hear an address by His Excellency Recep Tayyip Erdogan, President of the Republic of Turkey. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome His Excellency Recep Tayyip Erdogan, President of the Republic of Turkey, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Mr. Chairman, Distinguished Heads of States and Governments, Distinguished Secretary General, Distinguished Delegates, I would like to wholeheartedly salute you all on behalf of myself and on behalf of my nation. I hope and pray that the 77th General Assembly of the United Nations will yield the most auspicious results for our, for our countries and for the entire human race. I also would like to congratulate Mr. Kasaba Korossi for having assumed the uh, chairmanship of the General Assembly. And uh, the theme of the General Assembly, which is turning point for transformative solutions to inter intertwined challenges, appears to be very uh, accurate. This is the time when we are holding this meeting at the exact time when we're trying to sort out many challenges on a global scale. One of the biggest lessons we had learned out of the pandemic was to uh, establish international solidarity in the uh, resolution of global threats. As Turkey, during the pandemic, without any discrimination, we have managed to provide humanitarian aid to more than 161 countries and 12 international organizations, and we have provided Turkovac, which is our national and uh, local vaccine to the service of the entire human race. And last year, we had ratified the Paris Agreement in order to showcase how resolved we are to fight climate change. In the year 2053, we are aiming to become a zero emission country. And we had held the 16th Conference of Parties in Istanbul for the UN Convention for the Protection of Biodiversity, and we have shown how much we were willing to become pioneers in fighting against climate change. Because of the problems created by the pandemic in the supply chain, the global economy was impacted heavily. And with the addition of Russian-Ukrainian uh, crisis, we are experiencing a new wave of shock. The prices for energy, the food, and uh, raw material is increasing, thus creating an in enormous pressure of inflation, and it is ha having a significant ramification upon the global economies and social welfare. These developments have proven once again as to how important energy supply security is. And as Turkey, ever since the beginning, we have been focusing on energy not as an issue of competition, but an area for cooperation. Right next to our need, we have revived many projects which would support energy security not only in our region, but also on a global scale. And with the recent developments, our stance had been confirmed. The process that we're going through has also risked food supply security. This is the 21st to 21st century, and we have reached the highest extents of financial and technological opportunities. However, in this day and age, still one-fifth of the world is crippled in the hands of poverty and hunger. With the recent developments, the world was aiming to reach zero uh, poverty and hunger in the year 2023 as a part of the Sustainable Development Goals, but it seems like we are getting away from our prospective achievements. This is the day and age where we need to shed a light on our path, and that can only be possible through international cooperation and solidarity, and we need to assume a just and a fair approach towards one another. Against the challenges that identify our common fate, we need to move together. As Turkey, we are willing to showcase this will. 
as we have done during the pandemic and during the crisis of climate change. Also, we have proven our stance while we were fighting against the crisis created as a result of the Russian-Ukrainian conflict. The Ukrainian conflict is exceeding the seventh month threshold, and we think that the war will never have a triumph and a fair peace process will not have a loser. This is important because we are always underlining the significance of diplomacy in the settlement of the disputes through dialogue once and for all. That's why we got together the parties in Antalya Diplomacy Forum and then in Istanbul to become facilitators in a reconciliation process. As a result of the heavy uh, efforts that we had invested together with the Gen uh, Secretary General, we've managed to export Ukrainian grain through the Black Sea, finding its way to the rest of the global markets. Istanbul Convention that allowed this export is still very much vital. and. The exports are gaining momentum as time goes by. This is a critical agreement that was undertaken jointly with the United Nations, and this is one of the greatest accomplishments of the United Nations in the recent decades. And I think the international community revived its confidence in the United Nations as a result of Istanbul Convention, because Istanbul Convention proves once again that negotiations can yield results, especially in issues which are vital to all the parties involved. And the similar approach has been assumed by us when it comes to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant that is threatening the security of the entire globe. The conflict is escalating, and we are investing tremendous efforts in order to ensure that the war will be finalized by protecting the territorial integrity and the sovereignty of Ukraine once and for all. And we would like to le launch an appeal to all the international organizations and the countries of the world to support peaceful initiatives of Turkey to settle this dispute once and for all. We need a dignified way out of this crisis, and that can only be possible through a diplomatic solution which is rational, which is fair, and which is applicable. And on the other hand, all these disasters affecting millions of people have shown once again that the United Nations will have to be much more effective, much more influential, and that the United Nations has a responsibility to invest more efforts in the, the uh, solution of the problems on a global scale. The United Nations will have to be much more inclusive and be capable of creating uh, certain solutions for a more fair world. And the United Nations have to become an international organization where a common will of the entire human race can be put forward. Especially the Security Council has to be more effective, more democratic, more transparent, and more accountable. It has to be more functional, and it is going to be for the entire uh, human race in its search for peace, justice, and welfare. This is going to be a turning point for us all. And in order to remember our common responsibility, we have been stating the fact that the world is greater than five and that a fairer world is still possible. These are the remarks that we've been repeating in every platform, in every chance that we got. We are committed and we are driven in our fight and we expect the entire world to support us. And that's what I would like to call out to you once again. Distinguished delegates, our vision, our uh, foreign policy vision, had been always peace-oriented. Beginning with our region, in the entire world, we have been working tremendously in order to make sure that peace would prevail. In our initiative, which is called Mediation for Peace, 
that we have been conducting under the auspices of the United Nations, we have been spending tremendous efforts in order to resolve conflicts. From Europe to Latin, Latin America, from Africa to uh, different geographies, we are trying to take a mediation uh, position. And we are assuming a facilitating position in order to settle the disputes once and for all. We are right there in the heart of the region which is surrounded by conflicts. But we are trying to be a part of the solution rather than the problem. And that, are, that is only possible through the initiatives that we undertake. And within this framework, we are always underlining the fact that a peaceful settlement has to be found for the Syrian conflict within the framework of the United Nations Security Council Resolution 2254, which is going to be permanent and which is going to be reliable. I think if the conflict would be uh, sustained, uh, it would threaten the territorial integrity of Syria and the security and the welfare of our region. Right now, Four million civilians of Syrian descent have been hosted in our country. I think the Security Council will have to assume a responsibility in order to extend the decision which is supporting the help mechanism which was established in the northern uh, west of Syria. We are fighting against terrorist organizations such as PKK and its offsprings, which are imposing a great and a clear threat upon our Turkey and our security forces. This terrorist organization is changing its name on a continuous basis, and it's trying to legitimize itself. And we have to call out to the uh, global forces to stop weaponizing these terrorist organizations and to stop making the same mistakes of the past. We are powerful enough to take all the measures against terrorism, and that is an information that I need to remind you of once again. And we will never shy away from fighting against terrorism, and we will always be very resolved in taking necessary measures in order to combat terrorism. We are trying to do everything we can within our capability in a very sincere fashion to ensure that our Syrian brothers and sisters will be able to go back to their countries in a dignified, safe and a secure fashion. We are trying to ripen the conditions so that the civilians fleeing war can go back to their own motherlands. And in order for them to lead a dignified life, we are building 100,000 bricket homes in several parts of Syria so that they can uh, seek refuge there. A vast majority of these 100,000 brick homes have already been completed and they have been uh, handed over to their owners. And we have started our preparations in order to build an additional 200,000 uh, housing units so that one million Syrians will be able to go back to their homelands. In secure uh, zones, in safe zones, in a total of 13 different centers and in rural areas these projects will be completed and we need the international support in order for that to be possible. Within this project we need everybody to show serious and a committed solidarity and commitment. The irregular migration, the refugee crisis is not to be solved through leaving them to demise. To, uh, through building walls on the borders and through collecting them in refugee camps. We can only solve this problem through efforts that put the humans and the human life at the core. When that is the situation, we can clearly see that the Greeks are becoming much more tyrant towards the refugees around the Aegean Sea and the Eastern Mediterranean. As Turkey, we don't want to see the bodies of uh, babies such as Ailan to be washed ashore. But at the same time, Greece is unfortunately uh, pushing back these refugees in an illegal fashion, in a very tyrant fashion, turning the Aegean into a graveyard for refugees. Last week, a nine-month-old 
a baby called Asim, and a four-year-old, Abdul Wahab, have lost their lives because that the Greek Coast Guard forces sank their boats. And I think it's night time for Europe and for United Nations and other international organizations to say stop enough to such crimes which are crimes against humanity. Another neighbor of us, which is Iraq, we are trying to invest tremendous efforts in order to make sure that peace and prosperity can be established there as well. We want a political reconciliation to be established and a unity to be formed within the framework of an Iraqi identity. For prosperity to be sustainably established in Iraq and to stop terrorist organizations uh, abuses in Iraq, we have to move together. But of course there are terrorist organizations which are abusing the instability in Iraq and we will never uh, stop fighting against the actions of the terrorist organizations against Turkey uh, deriving from Iraq. As I have said over this platform multiple times, we are going to fight against terrorism without any discrimination. We are going to be able to get triumphant through a committed, a sincere solidarity. Regardless of their names, we are going to fight back terrorism in all forms and in all shapes. And we want our allies, we want our friends to provide us with the solidarity and the commitment that we need. And it's a natural right for us to expect that. The terrorist organizations and tyrant regimes Instead of them, we want you to cooperate with us. We want to forge a solidarity with us in order to contribute to the stability, to the peace, and to the welfare of our entire region and the entire world. And we are ready to work with you. Distinguished uh, delegates, from the point of view of the security of the world, there is something that we need to focus on, which is the northern Africa and eastern Mediterranean. And within that framework, it is critical to establish stability and welfare in Libya, not only for the world, but also for the entire region. And as Turkey, we are very supportive of the efforts of the United Nations in that direction. We want to protect the sovereignty of the Libyan people, the unity, the integrity, making sure that they reach the much desired level of prosperity. A fair and prevalent election period will have to be conducted in Libya and a strong government will have to be established there gaining legitimacy from the will of the people and this is something that we all have to contribute to. For a prevalent peace and prosperity in the uh, Middle Eastern geography, we need to finalize the Israeli-Palestinian conflict once and for all through the establishment of a two-state solution. This is something that we strongly support. We have to preserve the historical and cultural identity of Jerusalem and we have to uh, respect Haram Sharif. And we have to stop the illegal uh, settlements in the occupied regions through establishing a security for the lives and the commodities of the Palestinians. We have to establish a permanent and a fair solution for the region with Eastern Jerusalem becoming a, a capital and through establishing a free and sovereign Palestinian state. There are no other solutions whatsoever than this. This is going to be uh, for the best interests of the world, for the Palestinian people, for the Israeli people, and for the region. And we are going to uh, contribute our efforts in order for that to be possible. And it is our international community's responsibility to help the Palestinian Refugee Assistance Agency of the United Nations to uh, have an increased financial capacity. At the same time, we are closely concerned about the problems deriving from Iran. We have always 
support we have always supported the JPAC we need diplomacy and dialogue in order to settle the disputes about the nuclear program of Iran once and for all and we want solutions to be created once and for all and Azerbaijan has to free the occupied lands once and for all and we have a historical opportunity to make sure that a permanent peace and stability can be established in southern Caucasia. As Turkey, we have been very supportive of the process going on between Azerbaijan and Armenistan, and we have taken significant steps forward in order to make the utmost use of this opportunity that avails itself. Recent conflicts had shed an obscure shadow upon these positive developments, but we believe still that a permanent peace can be established between these two countries. We will always be by the side of our Azerbaijani brothers and sisters so that they can build their homes, build their future in a legitimate and a justified fashion. The transportation uh, connections in our region is a concern of us as well, and if we were to open those connections once again, it will contribute tremendously to the welfare of the entire region. At the same time, almost for the last uh, 50 years, Afghanistan has been fighting against uh, conflict, terrorism, and poverty, and still Afghanistan is going through a significant and a challenging time. The intermediary government will have to take necessary steps forward in order to ensure fundamental rights and liberties for the human beings. And uh, we believe that there might be certain uh, promising developments there. And we will keep on supporting our Afghani brothers and sisters during this process. India and Pakistan, after having established their sovereignty and independence uh, 75 years ago, they still haven't established peace and uh, solidarity between one another. And this is m much unfortunate. We hope and pray that a fair and a permanent peace and prosperity will be established in Kashmir. And we would like to extend our condolences sincerely to the people of Pakistan because of the uh, disaster floods that they had experienced quite recently. And after the flood, we had launched humanitarian aid campaigns, which are still sustained. And we would like to call out to the international community to help the people of Pakistan as they are going through this most unfortunate and painful time. The Rohingya Muslims will have to go back to their motherlands in a safe, secure, and a voluntary and a dignified fashion. And we are supporting that in every extent possible. And we are very sensitive towards uh, the protection of the fundamental rights and the liberties of the Muslim Uyghur uh, Turks in such a way that will never threaten the territorial integrity and sovereignty of uh, China. In the Balkans, we are investing tremendous efforts in order for peace and prosperity to be strengthened and for the disputes to be settled once and for all through dialogue in multiple uh, platforms. And at the beginning of September, we had launched uh, an official visit including to Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia and Croatia. Once after the elections have been <clears throat> uh, positively finalized in Bosnia-Herzegovina, I think it is going to contribute tremendously to the dialogue process between Belgrade and uh, Pristina, and it will contribute tremendously to the stability of the region. As Turkey, in the uh, Aegean Sea and in the Eastern Mediterranean, we want all the problems to be settled once and for all within the framework of good neighborly relations and uh, in compliance with the international law. I think those countries who are going after adventures in our region are making themselves feel funny, which are no equivalent to us at all. In the Eastern Mediterranean, peace and stability depends on respecting the rights of all the parties involved. We expect uh, Greece to leave escalation and provocation policies to one side and uh, respond to our calls for cooperation and solidarity. 
We believe that the Eastern Mediterranean Conference that we had recommended previously will serve this very purpose. Our interlocutors, unfortunately, had never taken a positive step forward in order to respond to this call. And it clearly states who supports uh, provocation and uh, conflict and who supports peace and stability. We will always defend our rights in the Aegean and Eastern Mediterranean at the uh, farthest extent. And we will never yield to the escalation strategies led by other countries. Even in the Cyprus issue, we want uh, to reach a settlement once and for all in a fair, permanent, and a just and a sustainable uh, way. And we have always been working together with the uh, Northern Republic of uh, Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus in order for that to be possible. In, on this island, there are two states and there are two different uh, nations, and this should be accepted by all. It is the key for a solution of the problems in the, uh, in the island of Cyprus to accept that the Turkish Cypriots have equal and sovereign rights and that their international statuses to be accepted. We would like to ask the international community to stop imposing sanctions upon the uh, Turkish Cypriots and to eliminate all forms of embargo and stop this tyranny once and for all. Greece is a member of the European Union and they are pushing back the refugees in the Aegean uh, Sea in a very inhumane fashion. And they are also imposing uh, certain policies upon the Turkish minorities which are of Muslim descent, neglecting all their uh, legal responsibilities. So what we want to see is to uh, see Greece finalizing these efforts and ask the European Union to be more considerate instead of turning a blind eye towards these violations. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, every challenge that we experience on a global and a regional fashion, we see that uh, solidarity between Turkey and the EU is very much significant. Turkey is celebrating the 70th anniversary of joining NATO. We are a very strong ally of NATO. We have uh, diplomatic initiatives and we have military capabilities that are contributing to the security of the Europe and the Atlantic. We are trying to provide to the security and stability and the welfare of the European continent in every extent possible. And we are the uh, Asian on the western coast of Europe. And we are uh, leading certain initiatives such as Asia again in order to become much more proactive. We are trying to establish closer contacts and solidarity with the African countries as a result of the recent global initiatives that we have taken up. Within that framework, between 16th and 18th of December 2021, with the large participation of our African friends, we have managed to hold the third partnership, Turkey and Africa Partnership Summit in Istanbul. Turkey is always showcasing its commitment to uh, the African journey for stability, for development, and for welfare as an equal partner. And our cooperation with Latin America is getting stronger based on mutual respect. And we are going to be institutionally investing in our efforts uh, to become much more proactive in Latin America. We are being shaken by several challenges that we encounter and we believe that the biggest threat we have at hand is the loss of will to coexist together. And that's something that I would like to underline. We are deeply concerned of the skyrocketing uh, levels of xenophobia, of discrimination, of Islamophobia and of racism. And we had launched an appeal over this platform to call that March 15th will be called a day for fight against Islamophobia day as a result of the attack that took place against the Muslims in New Zealand. And we would like to underline that appeal again. 
First within the OIC and within the General Assembly of the United Nations, we had taken certain decisions in order for that day to be declared as a fight against terror, uh, Islamophobia day. We hope and pray that it will be a possibility. We hope and pray that this day will be declared as a day to fight Islamophobia. As I have previously stated, Islamophobia is equal to anti-Semitism and it is a crime against humanity. And with these thoughts, I hope and pray that the 77th of the General Assembly of the United Nations will be able to accomplish the targets which will respond to the expectations and the aspirations of the entire human race. I hope and pray that you will stay in health and stay in peace. I would like to salute you all with love and respect on behalf of my personal self and on behalf of my nation. Thank you. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Turkey for the statement just made, and I request the protocol to escort His Excellency. Before proceeding, may I kindly ask the